Hello and welcome to our Sunday service and an especially warm welcome if this is your first time with us. It's an absolute joy to have you worshipping online with us today. Psalm 138 begins, I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing your praise before the heavenly beings. On the day I called you, you answered me. You increased strength within me. And as we worship together this morning, I hope you'll find the Lord increasing your strength. But first, a few notices. And if you'd like more information about what's going on in our parishes this week, do check our newsletter and the website calendar page, hopechurchfamily.org forward slash calendar. And secondly, let me say something about our online collection. Many of you already give regularly to our churches, and we are so grateful to you for that. But if you don't and would like to help us with the cost of our gospel work in the community and maintaining our buildings, then please do visit our online giving page for more information, hopechurchfamily.org forward slash giving. You'll find details of all of our individual churches there and also their treasurers, so you can choose which one to give a gift to. Thank you. Well, shall we be quiet for a moment? And then we'll begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let's say these words from Colossians chapter 1 together to remind ourselves who our King Jesus is. So join me in reading this whole section. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Christ all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Well, we're going to carry on blessing the Lord now as we sing our opening song. Why don't you join me in standing for this?
Well, do please take a seat. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Scripture calls us in various places to acknowledge and confess our many sins and wickedness, and that we shouldn't try to hide them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, so that we may obtain forgiveness of them by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, we ought to do so especially when we assemble and come together to give thanks for the great blessings that we've received at his hands, to offer the praise that is due to him, to hear his most holy word, and to ask him to supply our needs of body and soul. Therefore I ask, and I call you all, to approach the throne of heavenly grace with me, humbly and with pure intent, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the evil intentions and desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done, and thus there is no wholeness within us. Lord, have mercy on us, pitiful sinners. Spare those who confess their sins. Restore those who truly repent, even as you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live hereafter a godly, righteous and holy life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, our psalm this morning is Psalm 48. It's a psalm focused on God's heavenly and earthly dwellings. I'll say the odd verses. Why don't you respond with the even? Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great king. In her palaces God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so have we seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God, God has established her forever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count all her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Pass through her citadels. That you may tell those who come after that such is our God for ever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Shall we pray? Father of light, raise us with Christ to your eternal city, that with kings and nations we may wait in the midst of your temple and see your glory forever and ever. Amen. And now shall we have our first Bible reading. Our first reading is taken from St Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, beginning to read at the 16th verse. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head, 
from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thanks for reading that. Shall we respond to those words in worship now as we stand, if we wish, and sing our second song? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. And I will fear no evil, for my God is with me. And if my God is with me, Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go Through the calm and through the storm Oh no, you never let go In every high and every low Oh no, you never let go Lord, you never let go of me Beyond all compare, and there will be an end to his troubles. But until that day comes, we'll live to know you here on the earth, and I will fear no evil, for my God is with me, and if my God is with me. Praise you. Sing this 
one last time. It's our hope. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles. But until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Well, do please take a seat. And before we have our sermon, here's our second reading. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, beginning at the 35th verse. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father God, as we think about life's storms, pray you'd help us to take our comfort from Jesus, the one who can overrule everything. Praise him, Lord, forever. Amen. Sometimes I really value having an expert around. Uh, when the parish office first took delivery of its new photocopier, I really could have done with an expert present. Because there it was, all shiny, new and inviting, and me being a bit of a technology nerd, I was desperate to have a play with it. But I should have realised it wasn't going to go well when it took me two minutes to locate the on-off switch. And I have to say things went downhill from there. First of all, we had a paper jam, and once I cleared it, the machine completely refused to print. So what did we have to do? Well, we had to get a technician in. An expert. I broke it on day one. We've probably all had an experience like that, if not with a photocopier, then usually with a computer. The screen goes blank or won't start, and what do you do? Well, obviously you hit it. And when that doesn't help, you take it to an expert, hoping he won't notice the dint in the case. It's sort of the same with cars, isn't it? They used to be easy to diagnose, but now all you get is an engine management system warning light coming on, which means you have to take it to an expert who says, it's going to cost you, even before he plugs the computer in. You know, I actually get a bit suspicious about those lights ever since a garage lent me a courtesy car and their mechanic said, don't worry about the brake warning light being on all the time, the light's faulty. I'm still alive, so I guess the expert knew what he was talking about. When things go wrong, we like to call in an expert. And that's sort of what goes on in our Bible passage here from Mark's Gospel. Except this time, it's not laymen who are out of their depth and calling in the experts. It's the experts themselves who are about to drown. Let me show you what I mean. Think back to our second reading. It's the end of a long day. Jesus has been teaching by Lake Galilee and he and his disciples jump into a boat and head back across the lake. Now, the boat almost certainly belongs to one of the four fishermen in Jesus' group of 12. This is their home patch, their home territory. Peter, James, John and Andrew knew what they were doing. They knew how to handle a boat. And, well, I, I don't know how the conversation in the boat went, but I can just imagine one of those fishermen probably Peter, because he was the most boastful, saying something like, look, Jesus, it's been a long day. Why don't you have a rest? The lads and I, we know what we're doing on the lake. You're in safe hands here. And so Jesus has a sleep on a cushion in the stern of the boat. Oh, on behalf of all of us who occasionally have a snooze during the day, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for setting us a great example there. And as he sleeps, the experts steer the boat out across the lake until disaster strikes. A furious squall came up. Now, Lake Galilee is known for its furious and sudden storms, but the Greek word translated furious squall there could actually indicate a whirlwind or a water spout. This would be a really frightening thing on the lake. Whatever it is, the conditions are so bad that this bunch of expert sailors who have sailed these waters their whole life in their own boat are caught unawares and are quickly swamped. 
Now, I don't know if you consider yourself an expert at something. Maybe it's your trade or a hobby you love, something you know you're really good at. Well, imagine it going wrong as much as it possibly could and in public, just after you've told someone you really admire to have a snooze, sit back, you're in safe hands now. This is egg on FaceTime, isn't it? I guess that's why pride can be so dangerous. It takes us to a place where, frankly, we'd rather drown than ask for help. Thankfully, the disciples aren't quite that daft. And they turn to the sleeping Jesus for a solution. They shake him awake, crying out, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Well, of course he cares. And he stands up, rebukes the wind, and says to the waves, Quiet, be still. And the wind dies down, and the waves are completely calm. If you saw that happening, if you'd been one of those terrified expert sailors in the boat, how would you have reacted? You'd be gobsmacked, wouldn't you? You'd be a severe case of slack jaw syndrome, and probably, verse 31, you're terrified. Did you notice how the disciples turned to each other, whispering, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They're in awe, they're in terror of this person in the boat with them. This has taken their appreciation of Jesus up a whole level. What are we meant to learn from this little adventure on Stormy Lake Galilee then? Well, let's start with that question, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Because the Gospel of Mark is written to show us who Jesus is. And up to this point in Mark, we've seen Jesus healing the sick, casting out demons, teaching new and amazing things, and of course, forgiving sin. And now he's not only claiming, but showing that he has the power to bend nature to his will. There's no scientific explanation for being able to calm a storm like this. You can try it if you want. Next time the Met Office names a bit of wind, go down to Weston and stand on the beach, stand in the teeth of the storm and tell it to stop blowing. Tell those pesky waves to stop waving. But make sure you wear your wellies because you're going to get wet. But Jesus can do it. And it's not because of some clever science trick, but because of who he is. And that's the key to unlocking this story. You see, who has the authority to control the weather? John Ketley? No, he just reports the storm. Maybe it's Michael Fish. Well, no, he just tells you a storm isn't coming. But Jesus, he can stop the storm because he's the one who spoke water and wind into existence in the first place. They recognise his voice and obey still. No wonder the disciples are terrified. The man they'd known as Jesus is doing the sort of things that only God can do. Listen, if you've not realised this about Jesus by now, then you've missed arguably the most important thing in the Christian religion, that Jesus is both fully man and fully God. That's why he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus is God incarnate, God in human form. That's what we mean when we say in the Nicene Creed, Jesus is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, of one being with the Father. Jesus is God incarnate, God in human form. And that's why he can calm the storm. Second thing to learn from this story, no matter how expert we are, there's no area of our lives where God isn't needed because he's the expert who trumps all of our expertise. Now, we're all experts in something, even if it's just living our own lives. And experts have this tendency to trust their own knowledge and abilities, to plough their own course through the storm of life, ignoring the one who made them, which can be truly tragic if it means we ignore our creator. Because he knows more about sailing than any sailor. He knows more about politics than any of our politicians, though I suppose that's damning him with faint praise. He knows more about farming than any farmer. He knows more about God than a university of theologians. He knows more about evolution than Richard Dawkins. More about history than the finest historian. He knows more about fashion than a whole clan of Cardassians. And more about economics than the whole Bank of England. He knows how to run a marriage better than any agony ant. And he knows how to run a football team better than Jurgen Klopp. The Bible calls Jesus the power and wisdom of God. He's the expert of experts. If you laid all the world's experts in a line, they'd stretch all the way from here to a tiny fraction of the wisdom of God. Which all begs the question, who makes the better captain of my life, me or Jesus? Or to put it another way, have we embraced God's grander vision for each and every part of our lives? Jesus has offered us life in all its fullness. 
but I wonder if we really offer him the fullness of our lives to work in. All the things we think we know more about than God does, but we don't. Well, Jesus is the expert who trumps all our expertise. The good news is he already knows all our little secrets and he still wants to get into the boat with us. And the best and healthiest thing we can ever do in life is ask him to take charge of the boat, invite him to be the captain of our ship and let him give us a new direction in life as we discover the reason he made us in the first place. Because when it comes to life's storms, he's the one who really can make the world of difference. As big a difference as between a furious squall and complete calm. But maybe you're wondering why Jesus hasn't already intervened to calm your personal storm. If he cares so much about you, why does it feel like he's asleep on the deck of your sinking ship? Does he even know there's a storm raging? Well, of course he does. Look at what the disciples say to wake him. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Now, you only say that to someone who already knows about the storm. And they're wondering why he hasn't already intervened. And the reason is that Jesus is waiting for them to ask. Because often it takes us coming to the end of ourselves before we're ready to let the Lord help us. It's only when we hit rock bottom that we stop trying to be our own rescuer, our own expert, and cry out to the true expert, the Lord, for help. So listen, if you're in the middle of the storm right now, let me encourage you to reach out to the Lord and ask for his help. He's inviting you to put your trust in him, the true expert in life, to make him the captain of your ship. And that's when he'll begin to calm your storm. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I pray peace for anyone this morning who is right in the middle of the storm. But I pray it's a peace that would come from you and be acknowledged as coming from you. Help us all to reach out to you, to rely less upon ourselves and more upon your goodness, your mercy, your written word and your Holy Spirit as we face life's storms day to day. Guide us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, shall we respond to what the Lord has been saying to us in that sermon now by standing, if you wish, and singing. Sing about his love. Here is love. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the Prince of Life, our ransom, shed for us His precious blood. Who is love will not remember. Fiction, fountains open deep and wide Through the floodgates of God's mercy Float a vast and gracious tide Grace and love like mighty rivers Poured in session from above And heaven's peace and perfect justice the guilty world in love. When our hearts are filled with sorrow for the world so full of grief, we are one hope that is steadfast. Jesus is you, we believe. church will keep on singing in your name God we will trust you see the love the Father's given he adopts us as his own only by the blood of Jesus Before the throne, and I 
And as we stand, let's declare our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, do please take a seat. We're going to turn to prayer now. Keep asking for God's Spirit and he will keep pouring out his blessings on you. Heavenly Father, as you have taught us through Jesus, we welcome and come to you in prayer. We pray for all who uphold and teach the faith, for young Christians in schools and universities, for Christians witnessing to your faith at work, for all in danger of persecution. We pray for your strength and courage. In all things, Father, let your will be done. We pray for discernment and wisdom as we strive for international cooperation in managing the world's resources. For perseverance as we work towards peace and reconciliation. In all things, Father, let your will be done. We pray for the good sense in our family and community life that knows the difference between generosity and indulgence, between lenience and neglect of responsibility. In all things, Father, let your will be done. We pray for all victims of abuse and tyranny, for all who suffer long-term effects of torture, war or disease. We pray for the grace to forgive and for healing of body, mind and spirit. In all things, Father, let your will be done. We pray for those who have died and particularly for those who have no one to mourn their going. For those who have died unnoticed, we pray that they may rest in your peace forever. In all things, Father, let your will be done. Father, we thank you for all the gifts you pour out to us each day of our lives. Keep us asking and keep us seeking you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's continue in prayer with the Church's special prayer for today. And why don't we say this out loud and together. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, why don't we stand now, if you wish, and we'll sing our final song.
please take a seat and thank you for joining us for worship today. I hope you'll invite others to join in as we gather online and in person week by week. And if you're enjoying these videos on YouTube, do remember to give us a like on YouTube. It helps other people find us. But if this has been your first time with us, I hope you've enjoyed the time with us. We'll be here same time next week. And if there's any way we can help you on your spiritual journey, do please get in touch with me, Barry, at HopeChurchFamily.org. And finally, we do love to give this service away as a free gift to you. But if you are able to help support our costs and our work, then please visit our website giving page, HopeChurchFamily.org forward slash giving. And so may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And shall we finish with the words of the grace? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.